you're trying to grow your YouTube channel too? Well, let's see what's working, what's not working, and let's try and grow those sub counts. If you're trying to grow your subscriber count like I am, comment below what your subscriber count is right now and what you're doing to try and grow your channel. And we'll start a little community, we'll start a little forum, and we'll talk about what's working, what's not working, and we can get things off the ground and running. Welcome back, Sobers, to week two of my series of growing and monetizing my YouTube channel. Just trying to get things off the ground, trying to grow my subscriber count, trying to get those watch time hours, because as we all know, the goal is to monetize the channel, start making a consistent paycheck from YouTube, maybe replace a job, maybe be your full-time job and make content creation more of a revenue stream as opposed to just a hobby. As always, we're gonna go through different analytics of my channel. We're gonna go over some things that I tried this last week that worked, some things that I tried that didn't work, some things I'm gonna focus on, things that I learned, and then give you some good advice if you're trying to grow your channel as well. Things you can do with your videos and some research ideas in terms of coming up with video topics and. Uh, coming up with good keywords, titles, uh, thumbnails, anything that goes along those lines. Now, at the end of this video, we're going to cover what's working, what's not working, and we're going to cover some tips and tricks that I'm working on for this next week to try and gain more subs and see what we can do to grow the channel even further. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's take a look at these videos and see what's working, what's not working. Let's go through the first one that we posted actually last, last Monday. That's going to be my monetization video. Now, the first thing I want to notice about this video is that I've got a lot of green going on in this bottom right corner. Green is good. That means things are up. Viewer count's up. Click-through rate is up. View duration's up. That means people are more interested in this video. So it leads me to believe that I should continue posting videos about my monetization journey because obviously other people are interested in it. The other thing I love seeing about this video is I got nine new subscribers out of the deal. Love that. Love that for me. I got 8.8 .8 watch time hours, that's 7.8 more than usual, that's great. And then 346 views. Now, in terms of views, this is my second highest video. Number two, baby. Now, one thing I've been learning about a lot in my research is click-through rate. Now, click-through rate basically is the amount of times that your video is shown to somebody and then clicked on. Say it's shown to 1,500 people, if it's only clicked on, 150 times then you'll have a 10 percent click-through rate that's going to be key indication of how well your thumbnails are performing how well your titles are performing and how interesting your videos are on the external pages where it's going to be shown does it entice people to want to watch the video that's what you want is a high click-through rate you want a lot of people being interested in what you've got going on seeing what your video is about and being interested in the content that you're producing all right now the next video that i want to look at is going to be the actual sober content video I posted, which is my niche video. So every Monday I post uh, my analytics video and then every Friday I post something with my niche. Uh, I'm learning that uh, being okay, being disappointed is part of the game with growing a YouTube channel. Sometimes your videos just aren't gonna hit the way you think they will. So you gotta be okay with that and you gotta be patient. Sometimes the algorithm needs time to find the right audience and find the right people that are gonna want the content to start being able to offer it to the right people. So patience is also key. Now, if we go over here, look at reach, we're gonna look at the click-through rate on this one. So I thought that my title was great. Are you an alcoholic? I thought that'd be enticing to people. I thought it would get people to want to click on it to see, well, am I an alcoholic? I wonder what this guy has to say. So I still feel that way. It might just need a little bit more time to get out there and gain a little bit more traction, but uh, click-through rate on this one, we're only looking at a 1% click-through rate. So not super high. If we go back here, I'm still seeing a lot of green except for that click-through rate. So maybe my thumbnail needs work. Maybe the title needs work. Maybe people just aren't interested in the content. All of these things go into play and will help me benefit next week when we go into the next analytics video. And the last video I wanted to go over was the video. All I did was create a short out of my long form video, more of a promotional thing so I could drive traffic to the full, the full length video with my sober content. I added the video the full form video as the related video on the short, which is something you can do with your shorts. You can add a related video they can click on. It'll take them directly to that other video on your page. And then they're able to watch that and any other content that's on your on your channel as well. I think the use of shorts is great 
in order to promote your long form content and drive traffic to your channel. People will see it, they'll go to your, your channel and see what's going on on your channel. So that's another reason why you wanna have a good niche, a good um, foundation of content on your page. So you wanna have things that are all pertaining to your niche. And if they clicked on your page or your channel, that's because they're interested in the content that you're posting about. So if you're posting about content and then the content they see on your channel is not the same, they may not stay, they may not watch your other content. So it's good to be focused, it's good to be uh, consistent not only with your timing and scheduling of your posts, but with the message and the content in your posts. Something to think about when you're looking at making shorts and, and your methodologies behind it or your strategies behind making shorts. But one thing that I was told in, one, in my research uh, that I've been doing this week is it just takes one video. It could be one video away from hitting your goal of a thousand subscribers. You could be one video away from hitting that 4,000 watch time hours. If something performs really well, you may explode. So it's it's always good to keep that in mind and it's always good to keep that as a focus when you're making videos. You know, this could be the video. This could be the one. Just keep creating, keep being consistent, keep offering some value to the viewer. What's the most beneficial thing for the viewer? Getting the right video at the right time is what the algorithm does. All right, let's just get into some general analytics of my page. Uh, just some overall last seven days of recap see where we're at one thing i'm really happy with right now is my subscribers i've gotten 16 new subscribers in the last seven days if you watched my last video you'll know that in the last month i'd only gotten 18 subscribers so i've almost i mean i've quadrupled my ability to gain subscribers in posting this week so that's a positive i'm happy about that Watch time hours this week, we're at 19.8 watch time hours. So we're not accruing them super, super quickly. However, with the more viewers, the more subscribers, your watch time hours will go up. And then views, I'm at 13.6 thousand for the month. For this last week, I'm at 1,411 views. So not a ton, 66% less than the last week. But in terms of view count on my full form content, my views are actually up. Uh, because I've actually had two videos this week that have performed really well in comparison to my last bit my all my other videos Now I want to go over some positives of the week because you got to be positive It's one of the positives I'm really happy about this week is that I was able to stay consistent I made a goal of posting twice during the week and including one shorts video at least during the week I was able to post two shorts videos and two full form videos. So I'm staying consistent. I'm keeping true to my schedule got to be positive about that if you're not maintaining a consistent schedule you don't have to post as much as i'm posting even even if it's just once a week once every two weeks it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent pick a time a day and start posting on that day and just make a good routine and schedule for yourself with it the other thing i'm really positive about this month is that i saw a lot of green arrows let's go green arrows the green arrows are an indication that the videos I'm making are getting better, there's good engagement with them, they're performing well, which is what I wanna see. I wanna see arrows pointing up, I wanna see green, I wanna see growth. And so this week I am seeing that, both my videos full form status have done fairly well, not outstandingly well, but they've done well. And I'm seeing that what I'm doing is working, and so I just gotta keep chugging along, being consistent, and just got to keep being here for you guys to share with you what's working and what's not so you guys can follow along and hopefully benefit in the same ways that I'm benefiting from other creators doing the same thing. The other positive that I really want to focus on is the fact that your videos stay on YouTube forever. It may not blow up right away. Maybe it's not trending right now, but maybe it will someday. Your videos don't go anywhere, and then you can always go back and improve them. One thing I did this week that I uh, haven't shared yet is that I went back and I changed the thumbnail and title on my sober content video just to see if it might perform a little better. I love that you can go back and edit your videos. You can edit your full form content. You can edit your titles, your thumbnails, your descriptions. You can always or make them better. So if you do have things you want to go back and you've learned something, you can always refine your material. You can always refine your content. So what are my key takeaways this week? Well, I've got quite a few. I know that I need to focus more on my thumbnails. I need to focus more on my titles. I need to figure out how I can get that click-through rate percentage up. I want people to see my videos, be interested in them. I wanna make videos where when people see them, they do wanna click on them. They're interested in the information. They wanna hear what I have to say. I think finding what topics are trending in my niche is gonna be a lot more beneficial to growing my channel in terms of getting people to find my page from 
searches or just popping up on their homepage. So trying to find ways where I can include trending topics with my niche is going to be something I'm going to, I'm going to try and focus on moving forward. I'm also going to focus on staying consistent. I want to try and be consistent with my film styles. I want to be consistent with my messages and I want to be consistent with my subscribers so that they know what to expect from me. The other thing I really want to focus more on is brevity. I know that, you know, long form content, it doesn't necessarily matter how long your videos are. However, sometimes I can ramble. Sometimes I can talk about things that are just important to me. I need to focus on what's important to the viewer and try and focus on giving information that's going to benefit the viewer as opposed to just what I want to talk about. So I'm going to focus on some new strategies this week. I've got a few new things that I want to try. I've got some new research tools that I want to try, and I'm going to share those with you guys. So the first thing I'm trying is I have always seen this vidIQ thing on here. I've never really given it a chance. I've never given it a shot. I've never researched it, done anything with it. I downloaded it, got an account, and then kind of just ignored it. There is some really valuable tools on vidIQ. I highly recommend it. You can use it for free. There's like a free version that's quite limited. However, it lets you get kind of a trial version of what you can get with the full version. I'm considering paying for it because I do believe it, it helps me in terms of doing research on what titles and thumbnails are gonna be good. It has a really cool feature that I really liked where it will rate and score your videos as well as your thumbnails and your titles and everything really kind of tell you where you're sitting and what needs work and how you can benefit. It doesn't just tell you a score. It tells you what you can do better to make the score higher. The next strategy I'm using is going to be, well, we've already gone through it using the analytics that YouTube offers. I am getting better at looking at what analytics are important. I'm getting better about seeing what things I can improve on through looking at the analytics. So using that to my benefit, using that to try and grow and figure out how I can improve my channel. And I think that that's a good place to start. I mean, they give you the YouTube analytics for free. They automatically track everything on your channel, all your videos, they give you rankings, they give you scores. It's super useful, super helpful, highly recommend it. I already talked about this one, but I'm gonna start researching sober trends. And one of the ways I'm gonna be able to do that is not only through vidIQ, but also using AI, chat LGBTQ. I think um, just using different ways of sourcing information about what's trending in sobriety, what's trending in the world right now, and then just kind of using AI to come up with some new creative ideas because sometimes it'll give you some sort of direction that you may not have thought of. And AI can definitely be a useful tool. We have these tools in our possession. You might as well use them, and especially in the age of information, using AI to try and figure out what kind of content you might even want to make. Sometimes just digging into what people are finding interesting right now, digging into what people are, what things are trending right now, you can find something that you can click with, that you can relate with, that maybe you know something about, which can help you figure out what your niche is and can help you grow. The other thing I'm going to try and do is not only be brief, but have my topics be more related to real life situations, be more uh, real life usable information, stuff that you can go out tomorrow and then put into practice the very next day. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is the most powerful thing I learned this week, it's something called the ASQ method of uh, coming up with ideas. So the ASQ method stands for answering a specific question. What are you going to answer with your content, with your title, with your thumbnail? What question are you answering? And you can use that question to kind of guide the content. Say my question is, for the last videos that I, that I posted this week was, does something make you an alcoholic? Or do you want to grow your YouTube channel? These are two things that are questions that can be answered with a video that I can now produce of this is how you can do that. So using the ASQ method to figure out content, to figure out how you can benefit people. If you're answering a specific question, then you're typically going to be answering something that a viewer is interested in you're typically going to be answering something that somebody's going to want to find out and some of those videos can be very simple it doesn't have to be something where you're answering these profound deep questions you could be answering a simple simple question the video i watched was how to turn your comments on on your youtube channel that video exploded because it's such a simple thing yet so many people are probably searching for it because they're curious about how to do something that's a question come up with the answer and then be able to produce content that is the answer so that when other people are looking for it, they find your content and they get the answer they're looking for. In total, I did want to go over my dashboard here. In total, I'm sitting at 136 subscribers total. 
total watch time hours. Let's go over the total watch time hours for the year. We are at 485.9 watch time hours. So a lot more than last year. We still have some work to go because we need 4,000 to hit our goal in the year. Uh, but we are growing. So we're seeing growth. We're seeing subscriber growth, watch time hour growth, and we're seeing view growth. That's what we want to see, guys. So follow along with me. We'll be back next Monday with more tips, tricks, and analytics about how to grow and monetize your YouTube channel and how you can start making money online. Ditch that full-time dead-end job that you're working and start making content full-time. Start making money online. Start making money with YouTube. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I really appreciate you following along. Hopefully the analytics are helpful. If there's other things you want me to go over, if there's things you're interested in or things that you um, thought of while you were watching this video, please drop a comment below. I highly recommend that you comment your subscriber count where you are in your journey and we can talk about your journey. We can open up a community, open up communication about where we're all at and focus on how to grow and thrive in this new age of digital content creation. Can you say crowdsourced? So thanks again for tuning in, you guys, for another week of tips, tricks, and analytics. And I will see you again next week. Or tune in on Friday for some sober content. Either way, later, sobers.